Perfect. And can everyone see the slides? There, there's not much on the slides because I think most of it, uh, Chris and I were really wanting a, a discussion amongst us to just get a an idea of how everyone is working with their student ambassadors uh, and see if we have our meeting common challenges and what we are expecting to do with them moving forward. And I know, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm mistaken, I believe everyone has had the initial first focus group. Is that correct? Yes, we did it. So I think, I think, I think, you would, yeah. I think everybody has now. Yeah, so I think the, at the last time, not everyone had. So I think it would be really interesting uh, to hear what everyone's key learnings were from their focus group. I know at UAL, we learned some things that we weren't expecting, and they really brought uh, insights into the necessity of improving the hybrid experience for inclusivity uh, and also releasing the students from a burden of having to identify what is accessible and isn't. Uh, in feeling they weren't able to approach their tutors on those aspects. So it'd be really interesting to hear just your main key takeaways uh, that kind of um, you weren't expecting uh, and that you really are honing in on your case studies or just in uh, further interest in the project. There, there will be a sort of two part thing to this because obviously we um, we're hoping to have a meeting fairly soon to discuss the diagnostic survey and the ELSA transcripts will be part of that so that there will be a kind of a, a more in-depth view but it would be I mean it's useful I think to have a, a headline uh, uh, discussion and I know that Katie when you um, presented in the pre-training event whatever that was a couple of weeks ago your um, your first two points um, I think it's your first two one about uh, um, that being hybrid is an inclusive act in itself, and that students are very strongly, uh, um, very strongly feel that they want to retain the option of online engagement. That came across very strongly in, in our discussions, um, and um, and then also, although I think you you, you were able to tease it out more effectively, um, I'll ask Jenny to add to this. Um, the where the kind of burden of responsibility lay in terms of engaging online and so I know we had uh, um, one student who um, was participating in a um, in lectures she'd been sort of stranded abroad everybody else was in person and she felt very visible in uh, being the online person uh, rather than feeling like it was actually a, a kind of inclusive space it felt quite a, uh, uh, um, a, a visible exposed space. So, Jenny, thoughts? Because you've been in both sessions as well. Yeah, there was um, a range of really different voices. So, from those students who felt that the online learning gave them an agency to be able to manage their own well-being, time management, um, and capacity for learning. So that was a key component. Or, as I say, the majority of students, whether that was across their mental health needs or their particular learning styles um, or learning difficulties as well. Um, so that, that that was something that they they wanted to hold on to, because that opportunity for, for them to be able to join those spaces as and when they needed to on their terms, which made them able to learn better in those spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I was saying our, our students echoed that to where they felt quite on display and almost like a, a burden having to attend online and be in that hybrid space. Uh, so they echoed that. And I just from today's experience of being uh, attending remote uh, with no accessibility indicators myself, uh, you, you do have to be quite confident and feel very comfortable in attending in this manner without feeling like you're not doing something wrong or that you are engaged or just knowing that uh, you're not being forgotten, especially in the shuffle to the other room. I could imagine a if that would happen to a student, uh, 
who did have any manner of indicators for themselves in their personal experience, how that might uh, negatively impact a learning experience uh, versus being quite confident, assured, and not having any indicators to address. Uh, so it, even just the small bit of experiencing it from the other side uh, really highlights the impact of, of what those students have been saying, at least to me, uh, in their yeah. experience of, of hybrid. Made me think, and these last three days have made me think a lot more about the, probably more so today, because we're really, you know, I think the first two days was just getting used to it. But today, I think we, we really wanted to make sure we try and really address this um, relationship between the sort of uh, online participants and the on-site participants. And it really made me think between transitions, you know, so basically when the room kind of goes into that sort of, okay, this is not going to be a good experience for the people online. We need, we need almost like adverts <laughs> or something that, that kind of, the way we can just switch and basically, you know, I tried to do it in the text. I got all the times wrong. I said we'll be back in like half an hour or something like that. But everyone should know the agenda anyway. And we tried to keep to the agenda. But I think, I guess the question is, is would it be better to kind of switch channel to, to some music or something? I don't know. To something that indicates that we're in the transitional phase or we're having tea or we're having lunch or whatever. Um, or... Is it, do you think it's good for people to just see the room in a casual sense and feel part, still feel part of, uh, you know, when we're having tea, for instance? Can, can I add that? No, I, I think I, I've been working a lot with Padlet, delivering sessions on Padlet, and essentially I create, created sort of an index page. And I think this came up in, in earlier discussions, the idea that you have a lobby or something that students enter and there's a presence there and then when you have rooms or interactions that you can step into those rooms and that feels more comfortable because you haven't got these separate spaces that you maybe get cut off from and you know actually if, if there are any issues or there are any problems you can come back into that that lobby and then the session starts again from there or mm. um and and i think that's one of the benefits and maybe if we're looking towards the the, the sort of um, mimic spaces, having those those layers where perhaps you, you can't kind of enter into and then you, you step forward into the, the VR experience or, yeah. you, you know, so there are perhaps different levels. Um, so, so what we could try just to pick up on this idea and also, you know, I, I think the Teams or the um, Zoom or whatever relationship with delivery of this sort of stuff, in a way, is is currently all we have. And I think, as part of this project, we might be able we might be able to um, explore, especially you know, to let's say frame VR. There's no reason we can't fully transition into frame VR, and the on-site and the online participants are literally on the same in the same space, and there's no of these barriers there anymore because everyone's in that same space. So I, I think we definitely explore that. We're kind of doing that this afternoon because I'm going to introduce the Engage XR. We could, I also, I think it would be important for us this afternoon to put headsets on, go into the browser and go into frame VR in the VR headset. That is a mind blowing experience. So, because, you know, especially when you're, if you're used to 2D interaction in the, in the, in the, frame VR, then you're in there. So, oh my God, I've been in these rooms and I didn't realise it was this scale. So we'll do that this afternoon. That's what I was thinking this afternoon. So yeah, interesting. Katie, I, I was just going to pick up on that that point about um, the, the idea of a foyer or a welcoming space. And I think it, it, it it's, and this is where, I mean, Zoom has it slightly because it has a waiting room. And, and it allows you to get a sense that there's an outside and inside into the space. And that when you come into the space, therefore that space has been designated for something. Um, it doesn't do much with that. When you're in the waiting room, there's, not, there's nothing to see or do. You can, be, uh, um, can receive messages, but that's it. Um, Google doesn't do that. Um, you, know, you, just, you wait, but it just says, you know, waiting for the host to start. Um, and I don't think we can contact you. But I think, I think that idea, and this I think is what 
some of the students were getting at and what you talked about, Katie, that if you, you know, as, as social animals, the thing that we are most, uh, when we walk into a space that we do not know and it feels unfamiliar and everybody else is already interacting, we get very kind of self-conscious and that is exacerbated if there's you know, power dynamics or yeah. inexperience or whatever. And, and I think that that is magnified if you're coming into what looks like a quite patched together kind of hybrid experience. So, oh yeah, we put this on. I mean, that's why the owl I think has been quite transformative because it, at least it, it allows uh, um, uh, people online to be able to follow a little bit of, of, of the camera rather than the laptop thing where you know, you've got people peering around really the corner. Um, so I think anything that can be, could help give the impression that that you are welcoming students into that online space and it's not just an app it's not just a a, a kind of a, a patch together exactly. thing will at least help them to and if it's familiar as well you know they've been into it three four times they know where things are that makes it makes it a lot easier so sorry katie back to you no no i i was gonna say something very similar and, and i couldn't agree more ian i think um kind of picking up on what you're saying chris with the transitions i think if those are predetermined in advance and it gives that impression that we've thought intentionally about that experience of what it might be like if the on-site necessitates flexibility uh because it, if you're thinking only about that hybrid experience you, you're then kind of limited and not being spontaneous uh it, and i know there, there are some teachers whose pedagogies are are quite they they preset and they go with it, but then some are very loose and very flexible and responsive in the moment. And then, how do you ensure that you're then being intentional with your hybrid activities? Uh, I think for that thing of like, oh, let's move up to this room that's better for the activity that we're doing and flexible with that. So I think where things can show intentionality uh, and and going for that it is important yeah that that whole thing about flexibility and spontaneity and pedagogy and and having to really uh plan ahead for hybrid is a point of contention that i think deserves further testing katie i, I know that um obviously uh swps we don't we, we haven't had the headlines yet but next week uh, um, and and I think IDT haven't had their meetings, but I think Chudovitsi, you've had conversations. Is there anything from from your students' experience? Obviously, they're back online for for very different reasons. Um, so, are there are there things that they have brought up about the online experience? Um, так, можу коротко розказати, що під час дистанційного навчання ми, значить, зробили аналіз студентами, проаналізували. Ми запитали студентів, чи була їм, як їм, чи, чи було їм корисним дистанційне навчання. То студенти визначали позитивні та негативні моменти дистанційного навчання. Advantages and disadvantages of online learning and uh, different learning. And Natalia will give a short summary of the discussion with students. So they, they've had both the advantages and disadvantages, of course. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that was a triple plus, plus, and that's the positive advantages. Students are positive, and it's that they have the possibility to study during the pandemic and during the pandemic. So they have the possibility to continue the pandemic. The first and foremost, uh, the most positive thing was that the students were able to continue the learning process and that they were able to, to study uh, during the pandemic and now during uh, the war time. Yeah. Uh, that is the positive thing that the багато часу не до якщо вони працюють дома у них є більше часу для виконання практичних завдань у нас вони малюють там чи руками щось роблять що більше часу mm -hmm. uh, uh since the students were mainly staying at home they had more time to work on their tasks uh, on their projects uh, at home yeah. because they didn't spend time to travel and so on so they <laughs> yeah. не треба uh, more time uh, грубо кажучи збиратися uh, добиратися не треба коштів Mm -hmm. so they didn't need to commute, uh, they didn't need to, to, to spend money on travel, uh, so they could spend much more 
time on, on doing their, uh, their work. Because we teach the students in various social groups, not in the and we have students from different social groups and uh, some students uh, uh, are not from uh, very rich families and uh, this allowed them to save money and stay home and work on their projects actually so it was much more affordable і якраз у нас навчаються студенти з малозабезпечення, які на півсили, так якраз інклюзивні, що тобто ця у нас освіта можлива і діти, і батьки багато за кордоном за кордоні працюють. Yeah, some students uh, are from families where some, like, you know, uh, uh, some of the parents are abroad, for example, so uh, students are not from uh, with full, full families, uh, some uh, students are with disability, and uh, so this allowed, this gave them more flexibility and allowed them to work to work actually more on, on their tasks. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, uh, mm -hmm. negative, mm -hmm. minus, uh, negative, <laughs> negative. Серед негативних визначили, що е, не, дистанційне навчання не дає можливості е, емоційного спілкування. Mm -hmm. Emotional spilkovania is very good. So, this is learning mm -hmm. to balance uh, mm -hmm. the emotional communication, uh, emotional communication between the teacher and the, the student. Тому що студенти в нас творчі студенти, вони чекають підтримки, розуміння, що вот good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, the students are, these are artistic students that uh, are studying art and they, uh, they expect some support, uh, patience, help from, from the teacher, so, so they, they, they felt the lack of this support. І ще можливо серед негативно, що спілкування самих студентів між собою, вони ж молоді, вони хочуть спілкуватися разом. Між собою, що немає цього, це найбільш негативне. And the most negative point was that the students liked the interaction between themselves, actually, because they, they, they really need this connection and they change the behavior. Тому що такий вік, там, 17 до 22 років якраз. Because this is this age when they really need this uh, interaction, communication between themselves. Це основні. І підсумовуючи, ви сказали, що все-таки, коли ми їх запитали, яку би ви, ну, яка вам найбільше підходить, чи дистанційна, чи е, онлайн, чи And when we asked the students what form uh, would work better for them, uh, online or offline, they actually said that uh, they would rather choose the hybrid form, where they could combine online and offline. Практичні предмети, наприклад, педагогіка, психологія, то ми проводили онлайн. Практичні, де потрібно, ну, наприклад, малюють рисунок, там, малюють людину, то їм треба, ну, то студенти приходили навіть на консультацію. Ми намагалися все-таки, щоб, щоб була взаємодія на свій страх і ризик. Щоб... So I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, uh, they taught theoretical subjects, of course, online, such as psychology, philosophy. But for practical subjects, artistic subjects, well, the students really need this practical experience. So sometimes they try to organize some private consultations, like one-to-one -one sessions with the students, because of course you cannot gather all the students in the classroom, but uh, it's like they, they risk quite, <laughs> quite a bit, but uh, they try to very short sessions with the students. Але воно дало результат. It paid off because. Ну, Interesting. That is really great to hear. Can I, can I just ask about the current state? Is it, are, are students back in buildings at university in some places? No, so everyone's. Uh, we don't have shelters in that uh, in that building. Uh, so when there are like uh, violence, you know, alerts. Uh, so this well, the students, according to the rule, the students have to go to the shelters. 
to well but it, well we don't have shelter there so it's impossible to have a class with the students you know according to all of those so, so, so everything you're doing at the moment is yeah online. so it's a large they try to have some kind of a one-to-one -one meeting with right. the students, yeah. you know, if, 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 if it requires it. If, if it allows it, like if it's possible it, even, you know. So, yeah, because right now they are forced to have like top case as well, like it depends on their project. So they have they have this one-to-one -one meeting sometimes with the students, but according to the rules, you cannot have like a, a full uh, Class we, with all of the students together with the process. So, yeah, the relevance of this is. It's It's like if you put all the effort into it, it's impossible to, to, to make it work. But if you put all the effort. A lot of effort. Yes, a lot of effort. <laughs> Thank you. I think Katie might have to go as one. Is that right, Katie? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, but not quite sure what you have planned because I know it's lunchtime as well. But the other questions, uh, if, if we have the longer session time, I know uh, Gravity Sketch lured everyone in. Uh, the other questions uh, that we kind of want to engage with is what challenges uh, have you identified with working with your um, student ambassadors? Uh, for us, they've included scheduling attendance and varied levels of engagement and skill sets. Uh, we were just wondering if others uh, had uh, experienced those different challenges as well, or if you've experienced different challenges or no challenges at all, and how you might have mitigated that, what we could learn uh, from you and the partners. And then the final question was, what are the future plans for working with the students uh, and how or if any of you are bridging them into your case studies uh, within the curriculum based projects as well as kind of an accessibility check on uh, what we're working on in the case studies. And, and I, I mean, picking up on that, those questions are going to be with us for our project. So, you know, we will return to that. OK, Katie, we'll let you go because it's hot, it's one o'clock and people yes. are going to be waiting. <laughs> Indeed. Thank, Thank you very you. much. For